Hello, my name is George W. Jones, Director of Fine Arts for the Garland Independent School District, and welcome to another edition of Spotlight on the Arts. We're very honored today to have as our guest Dr. Bob Morrison, Superintendent of the Garland Independent School District. Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. Thank you, George. I know that you've been very busy going throughout the communities of Garland, Rowlett, and Sachse giving information about the upcoming bond election. How many of the presentations as of this taping have you done? Well, I'm going to count this taping as the 100th time. The so this would be, be the 100th time. Okay, so you pretty much know the information about the I bond. I think I have it down. For those viewers who maybe aren't familiar with the bond, could you kind of give an overview of what is contained within the, the proposed bond? Sure. Uh, one, one thing, George, just for the viewers, uh, just to let them know, on the website, on the far right side, when you go to the home page, there's an icon that says bond, and everything that, I, that I'm about to say is in the middle of that page when you open the bond page that says bond overview presentation. So if somebody hears something on this, what I'm about to say, they can go back and look at that and uh, get further information. But I think it starts off with safety and security on secure entrances. 66 of our 71 campuses don't have a secure entrance, which means once we buzz them into the school, they don't go into the office where we can screen them and make sure they have a reason to be there to keep the teachers and the students safe. Uh, they have access to the kids and teachers first, and we don't, we don't really want that. We want to upgrade our camera systems, our fire alarms and sprinkler systems. Uh, we have fire alarms in all of our, our buildings, but our, our sprinkler systems, the average age of our buildings are 37 years old, and about 50% of our buildings do not have a sprinkler system. So we're going to look at upgrading that. We have some Title IX issues with, uh, with girls' softball. We have boys' baseball teams that have lights at their baseball fields, but the girls' softball don't. And that's a Title IX issue. Also, they have restroom and concession at baseball fields, but we don't have it at the softball fields. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna fix that issue. Um, we have some ADA compliance uh, situations with our doors and the handles. Um, the, handle, the handle knobs are round, and that doesn't sound like a big deal unless you like fine motor skills. And in a time of crisis, you can't open the door. And then it also, but they also don't have locks, and we want to be able to put the locks in there to keep the kids safe and the teachers safe where they can lock the door quickly if somebody was in the building that's not supposed to be there. And then a lot of our restrooms, because the average age of the buildings are 37 years old, they have, um, they're not handicap accessible. And so if you're in a wheelchair, uh, the dispensers are too high, there's pipes underneath the sinks that keep you from being able to roll your wheelchair up under the sink. And in some cases, uh, the toilets aren't big enough, the area's not big enough for somebody in a wheelchair to, to maneuver a wheelchair inside, that, inside the, the restroom facility. But then also, in addition to that, we have a, a career tech center that's on, on uh, schedule if this bond was to pass to be built. And that's, a, that's kind of an exciting thing because it's different than what we currently have right now. If you, uh, George, uh, you know you know this, we have a great automotive and welding program at South Garland. But if you want to go to that program, you have to leave your high school to attend that school. Well, the Career Tech Center is going to be completely different. It's a standalone school. In all seven high schools, the students will either spend their morning there and then go back to their high school, or they'll spend their afternoon there. at their high, uh, They'll spend their morning at the high school and then go there in the afternoon. So the students will no longer have to give up their high school experience to attend Career Tech classes. And then we have a, a swimming pool or an auditorium. We currently have swimming at one high school, Garland High, but we have swimmers all over the district, but we don't have a facility, so we'd build a facility for that. But in addition to that, we would do water safety and swim lessons for uh, elementary age students. Second leading cause of death in the United States of school aged children is drowning. So we want to uh, see if we can help uh, alleviate that issue, at least in Garland ISD. And then we have some computer uh, replacements. We have $50 million in this bond for just replacing the current computers that we have and the servers and the switches to make sure things uh, move uh, at a faster pace and uh, is more up to date. And then we have iPads for middle school and high school kids. And those iPads, their textbooks will be loaded in there. And it makes the, the learning much more engaging and much more uh, meaningful. Uh, you know, when we, the example I give, I go back, uh, you know, George, I'm 50 years old, and when I go back and look at a textbook and I think about the plant life cycle or something, I, I used to remember seeing like six pictures and you'd see a seed, and then you'd see the sprout, and then you'd, you know, all of a sudden when you got to picture six, you would see the full plant. Um, well now, in an, in, a, in an online textbook, there's an embedded video in there, and for you push the video button and it would show you about a minute and a half the complete plant life cycle. So it's completely different, different way of learning. And so those are some of the things, and I think we're about to talk about something else. Yeah, uh, since this is called Spotlight on the Arts, Absolutely. talk to me about how the fine arts areas will be impacted should the bond pass. Absolutely. Uh, in, in the bond, there's $35 million, right around $35 million set aside for fine arts. And, and 
We have wonderful fine arts programs, as you know, and they're just busting at the seams. If you go to a, you, you go to a football game, uh, you see the bands out there. You go to choir concerts, the choirs are booming. But even orchestra, I was at uh, Jackson uh, Technology Center yesterday to, to give a, this presentation, number 99, <laughs> and uh, the orchestra was playing right after that. And so we're going to add a choir and a band facility at each of our middle schools and high schools, and then we're going to take either the band or choir room, depending upon which is the best one for the orchestra departments that we the programs that we have and we're going to remodel those and bring the orchestras out of the portables and into the buildings where uh, and also in, for climate control as you know uh, for instruments and things like that so um, not only was is it going to improve the facilities for our band and our choir but it's also going to improve our facilities for orchestra Okay, well, many people who know your background know that you, of course, were a basketball player and at one time a basketball coach, but what a lot of people don't know is that you were a member of the choir also. Tell us about that experience. Okay, well, um, it actually started well before I was in choir in uh, junior high and high school. Um, my parents, my mom, always thought it was important as far as the arts go, so I actually played the piano for like six years, took piano lessons, and I'm a firm believer of this. Uh, if you can teach a student to read music, that's almost like a second language. And uh, the students who can read music can do anything. That's my, I, I'm a firm believer of that. I've always believed that. And as a teacher, uh, when I taught, um, any time that the band or the choir were off on competitions, all of my honors classes would be completely empty because all those kids are in all the honors classes. And there, I think there's a direct correlation. But I also was not just in the choir. I was also in kind of like the jazz choir. So I was in the show choir as well. So I was the guy that did the little two-step dancing and the cha-cha-cha kind of stuff, you know. And no, I won't do that for you right now. <laughs> you know, I very rarely hear you speak in public when you don't talk about the importance of athletics, the importance of fine arts, the importance of extracurricular activities in the education of our children. Share that philosophy with us. George, you know, I, obviously the core of all public schools is the foundation, you know, math, science, reading, language arts. We want all of our students to excel academically. But we also want them to, to, to get their niche. And whatever that niche is in school, for some students, it's debate. I love debate. People don't really, you know, because I talk all the time. You know, a, a good debate is awesome. And uh, whether we're talking about debate or we're talking about the visual arts, you know, we added elementary art into 11 of our schools this year. And we're going to continue to add elementary art in Garland until we get elementary art back in all of our schools. Why? Because I have students whose passion is the visual arts. And our job as educators, yours and your role, mine and mine, is to open doors for students, provide opportunities for students, and let them self-select. And some students, I was at, uh, I believe it was Lakeview, uh, Lakeview's game this last week, and I believe I saw two football players in the band that were playing at halftime. Perfect. They can do both. You know, we don't always have to say kids can only do one thing. And I think the more opportunities we provide for students, the more engaged they become in school, the more engaged they are in school, the better their learning is going to be. Well, if this bond passes, there'll be a lot of excitement in not only the fine arts department in the school district, but of course across the entire school district. Can you give us a recap on early voting? When does it start and where can people Absolutely. cast their votes? Early voting actually starts Monday, October the 20th, and it runs through October 31st. Uh, there's different times on different days. Sometimes it's at 8 o'clock and 8 to, 8 to 6, 8 to 7, and then sometimes it's 7 to 7. depends on if it's on a weekend, if it's a Sunday, I think it's 12 to 6 or something like that. All of those are posted on our website, the exact times. I always tell people if you go at 9 o'clock in the morning, it's open at 9 o'clock every day. So, uh, you know, but, but then in the, the three locations are Saxe High School, uh, the Rollett City Hall Annex, and the Richland College Garland Campus in downtown, in the downtown Garland area. And so those three places with the election date of November the 4th. And if somebody is going to cast their vote on November 4th, where can they find out where their polling place is? You know, it's my understanding you can find your polling place to go to Dallas County election and, pu and plug in your address and it tells you your, your location. I always just tell people it's so much easier to go to early voting. You don't have to stand in line near as long. And it's opened up for about a week and a half. And so I always encourage people to do the early voting because the lines are not near as long and it's, you know exactly where the locations are. Well, Dr. Morrison, we appreciate you being with us today. And of course, now that we know about your choir background, we'll have you back to sing a few songs for us. How about that? Good luck with that. As Dr. Morrison said, we've added 
elementary art on 11 of our campuses with a goal in five years to have elementary art on all 47 campuses. The crew of GRS-TV recently visited a few of those campuses to see how the new exciting art programs have affected their schools. Let's take a look. Having art at Beaver Tech first year, um, we're learning about the elements of art, principles of design, and how art affects your everyday life. Just everywhere you go, any, any product that you have, you've got art all around you. You've got color, you've got lettering, typography. Um, so I'm just trying to get students to notice the art that's around them and then also use an art as an expression um, from their imagination, from experience, and then how it's been related throughout history. Um, we really didn't even have art um, as like a thing we do for free. You had to pay and like it was only Sundays and this time we get to do a lot of things. I love so much that whenever we do the art it calms us and bring, pretty much brings us together. Now we have art class so now we're learning how to draw and to color and to express our feelings with our drawings. And... Oh goodness, we are so excited to have art at Parkcrest. I don't even know that I can name all of the ways that in only nine weeks it's already enhanced our school and our students' experience. There, there's a freedom. There's a freedom of expression that they might not always have. Some students are great with freedom of expression in their homeroom classroom, but with art there's, there's really no black or white answer. There's so, it's so open-ended that I think students can really feel successful in there and what they do and build self-confidence and that it's about their creativity and it's about me allowing them to grow. Well, uh, we get to draw, we get to um, paint and do fun stuff in color. My favorite project has been the optical illusions because we get to work on it like it's an over time thing so you don't have to just like do it in one day. I grew up in Garland and when I got um, to the upper grades and realized art was actually something you could do in school, um, it was kind of like I found my place. And so when they um, decided to start adding elementary art, it really felt like that sh should be the place for me, you know, that I wanted to be there. Um, because as a kid, I really felt like um, it was just, it was kind of eye-opening to be able to actually do that at school. It makes me feel good because I, before that, I would always just draw in class and get in trouble for it, but now I have somewhere to do it. We get to learn um, new stuff and new tools that we use in there, um, like these crayons, but they're oily, and, and when we go further on, we can know like more stuff. The way, the way that we get to create stuff using a bunch of materials, like oil pastels. Here at Beaver, they come to art every four days. Um, it's a different mindset. They get to come in, um, they can relax, they can uh, take time to be quiet and focus. Then that also can be a time where they talk with their friends at their table to get excited about the project that they're doing. It's really fun. I get to like express myself by coloring and making it how I want to. They don't tell us to do it a certain way. We can do it how we like it. We get to have fun and it's mainly our time where we don't really have to do anything in the day. We just get to have fun and color. And it's just something that you get to get your creative mind flowing and there are no rules to it. Right now we're doing like fall, it's like we're doing all these colorful trees and we get to paint with oil pastels and other paints we get to mix them. Some of our students that may not feel connected in school because they're a struggling learner or they're not involved in any kind of outside activities, they have been able to find a place that they feel confident and that they can feel a part of something special. Art, just like mathematics, translates into all languages. So it's really, it's really good for our kids that our ELL learn, learners, our second language learners, they're able to um, be creative in class and feel confident without having the language as a barrier. Well, people don't understand that art is something that we, we do every day. We do it 
but they don't see that we're doing it. Art is a really good experience for this school and it's something different. I think it helps the school because it just helps us learn more things and like be more creative with our work. I met a lot of new friends in art and we talk together when we do stuff and we play at recess outside. When we had the porch party before school even started, um, the kids were so excited. They, I've not met the students since I'm new to this campus and district, but they were so excited. I was getting hugs and jumps and screams. Oh my gosh, we're gonna have art. Last year, um, they didn't have art, but everybody wanted art really bad. And this year, that they had art, everybody was so excited. Now it's something that we actually get to learn and do, and we get to do different things in it so that the whole entire school can do it without having to pay for it. Well, I think art um, brings an energy out in students. Um, many times students find their little niche in the art room and high school, middle school when it's an elective where they get to pick it, you know, that helps them come to school, it helps them relate um, art to all the other subjects because art can be related to every subject, science and language arts, everything. It's all linked together. I don't think people realize how much you can incorporate things like history and math and uh, science into the art classroom. And we kind of, the kids, they, they almost don't realize that they're learning to measure and they're learning about history and they're learning about cultures. And I think starting at the elementary level, that's where you get them hooked in. And our teachers all embrace art. We've all wanted it. I mean, everyone's, we had a party, we cheered, woo! When they said, we're getting art, I was like, yay, we're getting art. So. We're, our kids are excited, our teachers are excited. I'm very excited to have it as a part of Carver Elementary and I look forward to continuing the program and having it grow and expand into something really great. Uh, for the rest of the school year, I'm looking forward to being the best art person in my own class and well, to have good handwriting and make bubble letters and square letters and knowing how to do a lot of art. I would like art to be in middle school, high school, and college and progress new projects and harder things to do. Now that when you go to middle school, if we didn't have art, we didn't we will not know anything when we go to middle school. Now we know like all the dis disciplines of art now. Now now when we're gonna to go to middle school we know all of that. It's just really fun. You know, we've got art hanging now in every part of our building. We had teacher artwork that was displayed uh, when the kids began the school year, and now we have student artwork everywhere. And so kids now feel a part of our school, and they have something to show their parents that they're proud of. I think when, you, when it comes to art, there's no strict boundaries, and they can just, they can feel like they can step over and just have that freedom to express themselves. Thank you for watching today. As always, I invite you to visit our website at www.garlandisd.net forward slash fine arts. There you'll find a calendar of events and concerts that are taking place across our school district. I hope that you'll join us again next time when once again we shine our spotlight on the arts. Mm -hmm.